Welcome back to another episode of Freedom Finance with Lanny, guys. Today, I'm going to show you how there's a certain dividend stock that I'm holding that yields over 25% right now for me, and it all has to do with that long-term mindset when you invest and being a great dividend growth investor. You know, again, everybody knows here on this channel, I'm a big believer in dividend investing, starting as early as possible, and the magic of compounding can really work wonders for you. So let's check out, let's get right to it on how a dividend stock I've held for over a decade yields me over 25%. Let's get it. First, let's rewind the tape back to 2010, actually just before the year was over. We're almost approaching now 13 full years. Back when I was about, what, five years old, right? No, I'm, I wish, I'm just kidding. But I already knew then that I wanted to start investing into dividend stocks just based on research, books that I've read, people I surrounded myself with, as well as blogs and online you know, items that I read online. And I made a dividend stock purchase, specifically on December 30th, 2010. And I've actually held that stock without buying any more shares since that time period of 2010. What stock was that? Lockheed Martin, ticker symbol is LMT. You may have caught me talking about Lockheed on my you know, videos, talking about my five largest stock positions in my taxable account. Feel free to check the video if you haven't uh, done so already. So Lockheed Martin, guys, bought them almost 13 years ago, literally in the earliest stages of my individual stock investing career. At the time, again, this is gonna sound wild when you look at the current stock metrics for Lockheed. At the time, they were yielding just over 4%, had about nine years of dividend growth history behind them. They were paying a 75 cent per share per quarter dividend, or $3 annualized. So ever since then, you know, they've actually increased their dividend for another do uh, you know, dozen more years since 2010. And this was, again, back in December, on specifically December 30th, 2010, is when I made my first stock purchase. As you'll see here on the screen, what stock price did I buy them at? Uh, you know, $69, a little bit more than $69 per share. Bought over 28 shares back in December of 2010. Now, why is the stock price significant? Well, they were trading at $69 then. Fast forward almost 13 years later, they're now trading at $451, almost seven times that current stock price. Holding for the long term, buying and letting dividends reinvest has been wonderful right now owning Lockheed Martin. And the funny part why I wanted to mention that they paid $3 annually back then, 75 cents per share per quarter back then, fast forward again almost 13 years later, they now pay $3 per quarter per share or $12 annually. Think about that. That's how much they were doing per year. Now they do that, that's how much they do per quarter. And that is just me buying and holding for the long term. So the question is, how does this stock actually yield me over 25%? Well, we already talked that I've owned the stock for you know about 13 years. We already said that they had nine years of growth behind them, but about 13 years more of dividend growth ahead of them. And I currently have held my shares, not adding to those shares. So again, my yield at the time that I purchased was about, you know, what was it, 4.3% or 4.33% to be precise. So what has happened since then that allows me to say that this stock yields me now 25% per year? Insert dividend growth and dividend reinvestment. I'll show here on the screen all of the purchases the one big purchase and the dividend reinvestment happening, the drip happening. Every quarter since I've owned them, they've paid a dividend and I have reinvested those dividends. So what does that mean? Every quarter that dividend buys me more shares and it's been anywhere from 0.2 to 0.35 shares per quarter that's being added to my Lockheed Martin position. Now in 12 years, 13 years since I've owned them, they've also increased that dividend 
every single year. Some by more than 10%, you know, lately it's been a little bit less, but again, historically a very strong dividend growth rate. Um, I'll show that on the chart, just the years and, you know, of the dividend growing at least. So you got to think over 12 to 13 years that I've owned this stock, not only am I acquiring just a little bit here and there through dividend reinvestment, not putting any more of my true hard earned money back into the stock, but the dividend is also increasing at the same time. So my stock position is getting bigger and the yield is growing along with it. And as the yield is growing along with it and the dividends keep coming, it keeps buying more shares. Again, it's like clockwork, dividend payment, buy more shares, dividend growth, more, more income, dividend payment, buy more shares. It's just a continuous, you know, I, I call it like the cheat code loop where you're growing your position without you having to put any more capital in it. And your yield now on the initial cost basis increases dramatically as long as you hold and never sell the stock or buy more shares with your hard earned dollars. So I put almost $2,000 essentially into Lockheed Martin back in 2010, yielding 4.33%. So that same $2,000 now yields me over $500 per year. So at the time, it wasn't so large. Take your 28, 29 shares, times that by $3, you get a little over $75 in dividends for the year back when I first bought it. That same capital I contributed, again, that same $2,000, now it doesn't pay me just $75, it pays me $500 plus in annual dividend income, which again, continues to repeat the pattern. As the dividend comes in, call it 125 per share per quarter, um, you know, buys more shares, call it almost a quarter of a share per quarter. So every year I'm gobbling up at least one more full share of Lockheed Martin through dividend reinvestment. And that is why my yield on cost or my dividend yield from my initial contribution continues to go up. 25% is what it is right now here in August, 2023. But guess what? What's gonna happen come 2035, adding another you know, dozen years of dividend reinvestment and dividend growth? We might be able to say it's over 50% uh, yield on cost at that point. And again, that is the beauty of buying and holding for the long term. So a few big takeaways I want you guys to think about here. When you buy that stock, when you start investing, buy with the intent to hold for the long term, especially if you're a passive income investor or you're a dividend income investor trying to supplement your other income sources, buy undervalued dividend growth stocks, make sure they have a track record of growing dividends. Personally, I reinvest my dividends because I don't need the income quite yet but when I do, I'll turn the drip off. But reinvesting dividends, holding for the long term, letting your dividends grow and your share count grow through dividend reinvestment will increase your yield on cost that you, can, you can't you can get back your time. All you could do now is invest going forward. So again, with the power of compounding and investing for the long term allows you to have and generate yields above and beyond your imagination. So the question I have for you is, do you have stock positions in your stock portfolio that now based on your cost basis yields more than 5%, yields more than 10%? In my case, do you have any that yield over 25% of your initial cost basis? Let me know in the comments. And again, if this helps you, helps educate you on the power of investing for the long term, becoming a dividend investor or investing for passive income, definitely subscribe to this channel and give this video a nice thumbs up, guys. Again, I'll keep putting out more content. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see from this channel. This was Lanny from Freedom Finance. Catch you on the next one.